Hello, I'm Christopher Ridenour, host of New Jersey Works on New Jersey Public Television. Now, I'm not here to talk about careers. Instead, I'm here to help you with your Tools for Schools IAQ-IQ. That is to raise your knowledge of indoor air quality and what you can do to make your school's air safer to breathe. Why IAQ? Well, you may not know that indoor air quality is one of the top four major environmental health concerns in this country. And 90% of Americans, including the students, spend most of their time inside. A popular myth is that you will find pollutants and contaminants in the outside air. That's not quite true. You'll find carbon monoxide, animal dander, molds, microbial organisms indoors as well, sometimes up to 100 times more. The good news is you don't need to be a building engineer or a safety expert to help improve the air quality of your school. All you need are the four P's. Now, what are these four P's? Thank you so much for asking. The first are pollutants. What are they? Now, here in a school, we might consider copier emissions, uh, emissions from computers, as well as molds. Anything that dirties the air would be considered a pollutant. We also need to know something about the second P, pressure. Airflow goes from high pressure to low pressure. In a normal working system, all of those pollutants get flushed right on out of the building. Now, our third P are pathways. Pathways are things like the entrance to the school. It could be windows. It could be air vents. All of these things that might bring the pollutants into the building. The fourth P, perhaps the most important, are people. We need to listen to the complaints that our folks have about the environment, what they're reacting to, because different people react differently to different pollutants. Now that we have the four P's, we can use our senses to determine the quality of our air on the inside. And this is how. Looking. Make sure you check out to see if there are intakes on the outside that are cluttered or have dust around them. So make sure you're observant. Also, listen for any unusual noises that you hear while walking through the building. See if you can notice or feel any changes in temperature or humidity. Do you smell any unusual chemical odors? Do you smell mold? Now, as for taste, I wouldn't recommend tasting anything that you might deem as a pollutant. So, with our five senses ready to go, let's do a walk through the building. Many indoor air quality problems begin outdoors. Now, we're going to need to think about pathways as we're outdoors. Here we have one of those pathways, the window. We need to make sure that it is clutter-free. There are also no pigeon droppings or any birds around in this area because that's the kind of pollutants that can be flushed right into the building by way of this pathway. Another thing we have to be concerned about is any idling school buses. That carbon monoxide is a pollutant and certainly can get in our school if we're not careful. As you can also see, there's painting going on, making the school more beautiful. We need to be sure that the fumes don't go into the building, because certainly that is one of those pollutants that affects indoor air quality. So we just finished part of our outdoor inspection for indoor air quality. Now we're going inside. We're going to walk through the hallways as well as the classrooms. But there's somebody we need to meet. Hi, Chris. How are you today? I'm excellent. How are you, Nick? Fine. Now, what is it that you do for the building? I am the building engineer and custodian. Okay. And we're standing at a very important part of this pathway in helping the indoor air quality uh, maintain safety, and that's the barrier mat. Explain what this does. The barrier mat traps pollutants that come in on people's shoes from the outside. It's laundered and replaced every two weeks. So the school recognizes the importance of these things in helping maintain indoor air quality. That's correct. So we're continuing our walk through through the building, and we can't say that we did a complete job without inspecting the hallways. Now we look at both the walls and the ceilings for cracks because they serve as pathways to pollutants. Now there are no cracks here as I look, but I'm also noticing that this is plaster, not cement. Yeah, uh, the building was built in 1923, so um, there's cement behind and then it's plastered over. So 1923 means that there's the possibility of lead here? Yes. Uh, lead-based paint was probably used to paint this building, yes. Which is absolutely critical because we know that lead-based paint adds to the respiratory ailments, asthma, as well as brain function. The good news is, again, that there are no cracks that allow that paint to flake through. Now, also with the age of the building, there is no HVAC system, yes? No, there is not. The only ventilation we have is through the windows and the doors. We do have supply 
air from the outside. It's, it's heated in the, in the wintertime mm -hmm. and fresh air in the summer. All right, well, I'll tell you what, while we're talking about the classroom, let's go ahead and visit this one. Okay, sounds good. So here we are in a classroom checking for indoor air quality, but already I see that there's some issues here. Yes, the issue here with indoor air quality is the exhaust for the classrooms are in this locker room. The plenum is above. The, the air exhausts through the lockers and out, out the building. Mm. But these lockers, you can see, are filled with books and other items which block the flow of air leaving this classroom. And one thing we know about that uh, high pressure to low pressure is that any pollutants here are concentrated because they can't get swept out of the building. That's correct. Okay. So moving on, another beautiful adornment, but uh, this is looking like an issue. Yeah, the tapestry here covers an old board and it's beautiful, but it also creates a problem with vermin. Vermin will get behind there, make nests, multiply, and we'll have roaches all throughout the building. That also makes me think about uh, if the classroom has a pet, like a hamster or some kind of rodent, it's absolutely critical to make sure that that's clean as well. Yeah, the cages have to be clean. We also want to make sure that we're checking for clutter. I don't know about you, but uh, to me this is looking like clutter. We see the boxes, we see the stacks of stuff, we see material as well. Also, just roach motel but unintended. One of the things too is that while there's no area rug in this room, if there is a classroom that does have an area rug, it's also a place that collects pollutants unless it's taken out and laundered as frequently as the barrier mat downstairs. So several issues here, pressure issues, pollutants in the air are issues here. Talked about the asthma, respiratory ailments as well. Clutter, this is a hot spot. All right, here we are in the bathroom. Certainly this is the perfect place to use our senses, taking in a whiff for mold and smell of water as well. Looks good here. Checking in the stalls. One of the things that we'll want to watch out for is the exhaust system here in the bathroom to make sure that it's well ventilated. And we can see that there is an exhaust right behind the commode, which certainly has its advantages, at least to the people indoors. Here is a drainage pipe, and there's no standing water, no stagnant water, so there is no chance for microbial organisms to gather here and certainly influence the indoor air quality. And looking at the sink, water's off, no mold on the walls. Take a look underneath for leaky pipes, no leaky pipes, standing water, which also causes water damage as well, which is something that influences indoor air quality. And it looks good in here. So we've already talked about the detriment that mold presents in a closed place like a school. Now, I want to call your attention to something that may be confused with mold. It's called efflorescence. Why does it look the way it does? Well, the, pla the plaster is mixed with lime and other uh, material, and when it gets wet, it absorbs that, and then when it dries, this is what seeps out of the plaster. Okay. Yes, Nick, I see what it is you mean. Um, so clearly, this is something that, again, is not mold, but it is a condition of the moisture. Yes. Yes, thank you.